What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your taxes for all of your crypto transactions. Now, yes, unfortunately you have to pay taxes when you buy and sell crypto. More importantly, when you sell the crypto and regardless of if you report a loss or a profit, you need to report that on your taxes. Now, I'm in the United States. The IRS is a very, very strict organization that wants to know where all of your money is at all times. I'm by no means a fan of them, but I play by the rules. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to get ready for tax season. Now, the past year, 2021, was a pretty important year for me, uh, especially because I dove into cryptocurrency and I made a lot of trades across multiple platforms. And in hindsight, it wasn't the smartest idea when I was first learning, jumping between Gemini, Coinbase, Nexo, all these different platforms, because it made the tax portion a nightmare. At least it was a nightmare until I found a certain program that honestly has been a huge lifesaver. I was able to organize everything within a day. It still took some legwork, but now I know everything's nice and organized and I'm ready to send it off to my accountant. So I wanted to share it with you guys and not a sponsor at all. These guys don't even know I exist. I found it on my own. I tried a handful of different platforms. This one was the easiest. I did pay for the basic version, which is only 50 bucks a year. I don't think that's that bad but you may not even have to pay anything to use this platform. I'm gonna show you why in a second. So if you're familiar with having to pay taxes for your cryptocurrency trades, you are probably familiar with Form 8949. This is what it looks like, and this is the page on your tax return that you're going to have to report all of those crypto trades. But how do you fill it out? That's the tricky part, and I feel like there's not that many videos on YouTube that show you how. So I'm gonna walk you step by step on how to get all of your transactions into one place and then onto this form. All right, so this is the tool that I'm recommended to you guys. Again, this is purely for educational purposes only. Definitely consult your accountant with your taxes. Make sure you're doing it right because I'm just some guy on the internet, but I found a lot of success using this. It just made my life really easy. I'm gonna dive in and show you exactly how it is taxbit.com. So you type that in, the login's pretty, well, the sign up is pretty simple. You can just connect to your Gmail and then this is what it looks like. As you see, I already have everything connected. Here's just a couple of uh, coins that I have on exchanges. I don't hold my Bitcoin on exchange, but for altcoins, I keep that on the exchange because I don't plan on holding on to them very long. But let's get into the good stuff. If we go down to account and where it says add transactions, if you click on this, this is where you're going to add all of your exchanges, all of your CSV files, or even transactions or your wallets, you name it. Everything can be added right here. So for exchanges, if we go to add exchange, so we're gonna click on this and depending on whatever exchange that you have your cryptocurrency on, you can see there's not too many exchanges that it supports, but don't worry because I'm gonna show you how to get around that. If you're just using Coinbase or Gemini or Binance, those are like the three big ones. The reason why you don't see Coinbase and Gemini on here, you only see Coinbase Pro, is because I already have them connected. Here they are, right here and here. When you connect it, don't worry, it's not like then this program could get into your uh, could get into your accounts and steal your money. You're only giving them an API that allows them to view all of the transactions. They have no right whatsoever to withdraw or make any trades. So you don't have to worry about that. And that's pretty much how most accounting software works when it comes to cryptocurrencies. But all these other exchanges that you might have cryptocurrency in that it is not connected to, that's when you have to pay for the premium version or you just may have to add the transactions manually. It's not that bad if we go up here to upgrade plan. I'm not trying to sell you guys on it. If you can use the free version, by all means, go for that. But if you don't have just those basic exchanges, then you may have to jump over to uh, one of these plans. So I paid for the $50 a year, which isn't terrible. Then you have a couple of even bigger plans, 175 or 500. Uh, I guess if you're getting audited, then this might be a good thing to use and it might be worth the 500. But luckily I am not being audited, so I only chose the $50 a year. Let's go back to add transactions. So any exchange is very simple. If we were to click on one, look at this. You need to maybe enter an API key and then you can get help if you don't know exactly how to do that. Uh, if you have a wallet, whether it be a Bitcoin wallet or a MetaMask, you name it, Coinbase wallet, then you could add it this way. You could manually add in transactions. This is what I had to do for one of the exchanges. 
or you could import a CSV file. So I did have some on Cash App and this was pretty painless. Uh, you do need to follow their template. They had a template. If you click on that, it'll show you how to convert to a CSV data. If we were to click on read the walkthrough and then just download the template file, we'll open it up really quick so you can see it. And pretty much this is what it needs to look like. You need date and time, transaction type, send quantity, set currency, sending source, receive quantity, all of these different fields. And what's even nicer is it kind of walks you through exactly how you're supposed to write everything down. Uh, I was able to follow this and it was pretty simple and it looks like it worked for me with all of my Cash App transactions. But that's all easy stuff. This is the cool feature, adding the manual transaction. This is when the CSV file doesn't work or you can't download a CSV file because your exchange doesn't provide it or you don't have access to it, whatever it might be. Uh, adding exchange is really easy, so that's why we're not really focusing on that. I'm going to show you how to add a transaction and then we're going to see how exactly you download it and turn it into that 8949 form for your accountant. So we're gonna jump into my email and I used Nexo back in April. I'm in New York. Nexo got a cease and desist letter from the state of New York. So they stopped servicing everyone in New York. Luckily, I sold all of my uh, coins or moved all my coins out of Nexo way before that cease and desist letter came knocking at their front door. But here is what you may or may not have. You may have something that looks like this. I was doing a lot of swaps, which definitely makes it a headache when it comes to taxes. Uh, I was swapping Litecoin for Bitcoin, Litecoin for Ethereum, a whole bunch of different swaps. But every single time you swap cryptocurrency, that turns into a taxable event. So how do you report that? It's not like I could give this to my accountant. They're not going to know what they're looking at and they're not going to be able to properly report it. So this is me doing the legwork for them. Pretty much, if we go back here, self-explanatory transaction type. So did you buy, sell, trade, expense? This is if you're buying something, say you're buying a good and you're trading your crypto for that good. Income, this is your interest. Did you send a gift? Did you receive a gift in crypto? A card reward, if you have one of those credit cards that give you maybe 8% back in crypto. And then did you move your coins in and out? I thought at first this wasn't important, but this is actually very important when you're transferring your coins in and out. You need to make sure you let Taxbit know so they know how to properly find your cost basis. And you're gonna see all of that in a second. But for this example, we're doing a trade. I'm pretty much gonna copy everything here. So it's coming from Nexo. So transaction source, we're gonna type in Nexo. Click on that. This is important. When was it sent? April 12th, 2021 at 1.36 p.m. You need to include the time as well. So we had 0406 uh, 2021. Make sure to have the slashes as well. And then time, when was my time? It was 1.36 p.m. So 1.36 p.m. The reason why you need to add time is because what if I maybe traded at this time and then 10 minutes later I made another trade or I sold one of those. Taxbit needs to rely on the timestamp so they know if and when you bought that uh, cryptocurrency and for what price it was for your cost basis. I can't stress that enough. But now for sent and receive, we sent Litecoin and we received Bitcoin. If you don't see the crypto on this list, that's okay. You can just type it in here. So what about USDC? And then don't hit enter. If you just click on top there, it'll pop up. And then I could choose that, but we didn't do that. So let me get rid of that and do BTC. All right, so receive is pretty simple. Receive is right here. I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste it in there. But sent for Litecoin. It doesn't tell me how much I sent. I sent $584, but it doesn't show exactly how much Litecoin I had. Uh, I don't know if this is just a Nexo thing, but I had to do some math here. So we're gonna pull out my calculator and pretty much what we're gonna do is, you can see right here, one Litecoin uh, is this much Bitcoin. This was my exchange rate. So we're gonna copy the Bitcoin and we're gonna put that into here. And then we are going to divide that 
by this number right here. So 0 0.00, .00 four zero two six nine one hit enter that's how much litecoin it was it was two point three nine six nine one two litecoin so now i can copy this two four six eight i only need to go eight numbers back i believe and then i could paste that right into here and then you could see here's the trade that i made now there was a fee it was a minor fee for both litecoin and bitcoin with moving the cryptos I don't know exactly what the fee was, unfortunately. I should have kept better track of all of that. This does say zero dollars in fees, but that was Nexo not charging me anything. The miners had to be paid when I move crypto. When anyone moves crypto, the miners have to be paid. So I don't have that built in, but that is something that you could write off. So keep track of that. But this is pretty much everything you need to do. And then you'd hit save transaction. I'm not going to because I already have this transaction in, but then there'll be a little check mark and it would say add another transaction or you can just jump onto one of the other fields. So once this is in, let's see what it looks like. So we're gonna go to transactions and I just put in a date range between uh, the 12th and 13th so it could pop up. And here it is. This was the trade right here. So I traded 2.39 Bitcoin, uh, 2.39 Litecoin for 0 0.0096 Bitcoin. And I had a $23 gain from it. Now, if I click on cost basis, it shows exactly where these Litecoin buys came from. So it was on the 12th and the 4th is when I purchased Litecoin and these were the prices that I bought them for. So that's how I could come up with my cost basis. So this single transaction, this single trade is actually gonna turn in to two rows on the 8949 form for me. Some of them are more advanced than just two. Some of them when you're trading a lot might be several. You might have more than two, it might be 10. And that's all, each one is gonna be a different row on that form. So keep that in mind. But once everything's in, this is pretty cool. If we X out of this, you could sort through however you want. So I could sort by type. I could look at all of my buys. If I click on this, it'll just show me all of my buys. And then I could sort from if I'm missing any cost buys for basis for any of them, which I'm not. I can sort by which source it's coming from. So let's look at all of the Coinbase buys. And then I could sort by currency. So let's say I only want to see my buys in Coinbase of Ethereum. And then there you go. You can drop down to whichever date. Uh, but it's really cool how you could filter all of it. And one thing that I think that's really important with this is flags. So you want to find missing cost basis. So here's one that is missing a cost basis. And then it has this little symbol right here. If we click on it and if I open this up, so you can see this cost basis has three separate transactions. And the reason why there's three is this 3.75 Litecoin that I ended up trading for Bitcoin. It's not like I bought that 3.75 all at once. You could see different dates. I bought different amounts. And then it looks like there's 0 0.0001 Litecoin that isn't accounted for. So this is probably a rounding error. Just when I was doing that quick math before. There may have been a little rounding error or maybe there was uh, a little bit of a minor fee that I wasn't including. So that's why this is off. But at the end of the day, let's say Litecoin was around $250 at this time. And if we multiply that by the 0 0.0001, we're talking about I'm off by maybe two cents. So two cents, that's not that bad. I don't, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I can try to correct that later. But if you're significantly off, if you're missing maybe a whole coin. So if I'm missing $250 here, if I'm missing a couple thousand dollars, then that's a problem. And that's when you're going to want to look back and see what you did wrong. I'd even say a few bucks you'd want to look back. When you get down into the pennies, maybe it's not that much of a concern. But again, that's a question for your uh, tax accountant. So after you have all of your transactions in from all of your different exchanges, so I was using Cash App, Gemini, Coinbase, and Nexo, and it's all in here. There's 11 pages worth, or 258 transactions. 
We can then go to the taxes tab. So I have a nice little short-term loss and a very small long-term gain. And then total income, this was the interest that I made throughout the uh, year. This was just when I had it in that account that ended up uh, getting that cease and desist letter from New York. So I wasn't able to utilize that account that much, but because I do have a short-term loss, I get to deduct that from my taxes. So that's a good thing. And what's nice is you will get a little warning sign that one transaction is missing that cost basis, which we did look at. So that's not going to pop up. That missing 2.5 cents isn't gonna pop up, but that's fine. You're gonna hit download IRS 8949. And when you do that, you can hit CSV or you can hit PDF. Now, if you did what I did where you're entering manual transactions, then you may need to upgrade to the basic plan. But if you're just using Coinbase and that's all you ever used, or you're just using Gemini, then you're not gonna to have to pay for anything. You pretty much get this uh, document for free, which is really cool. But once you hit that download, you'll then download all of the Excel files, all the CSVs, and you can see, Here's all of my Coinbase transactions, here's my Gemini transactions, and here's my Nexo. The reason why you don't see Cash App is because I haven't sold anything that I bought in Cash App. And then this is every single transaction right here. This is all three combined into one, which I think you only get this if you upgrade. Otherwise, they're going to be across the three separate ones, so then you'll just have to put that into a file. But then to show you what it looks like, this was one of them, this isn't Every single one, this was just the Nexo one that we were uh, messing around with. And this is how it's laid out. And you may be wondering why it's labeled what it is. Well, if we open up Form 8949, you could see that's what all these fields are. Description of property, date acquired, date sold or disposed of. So it's all of those fields, but in an Excel file or a Google Sheets file. And even down to, it will show what your gain and loss is, if it was a long-term or a short-term trade, what tax year, and then even what box. So this makes it very easy for your accountant to uh, check everything off. They will know exactly, okay, is it gonna be A, B, or C? What was your date acquired, date disposed of? This is what it's gonna look like. This is what it should look like. So maybe you're filing by yourself and then you already have this form filled out. Maybe this would help your accountant if you give it to them. Or maybe they just want the Excel file and you give that to them. But that's a pretty quick overview of TaxBit. Pretty harmless in my opinion. Uh, it definitely helped me and it saved hours of trying to figure out exactly what I needed to report. But guys, if you like this video, if it was helpful and you think this is a tool that you're gonna wanna use this year, Link will be in the description for you to check it out. And guys, as always, I will see you in the next one.